Keith McGowan here, the Outboard Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. Today we're going to continue on with our 2.5 Mercury 150 horsepower rebuild. It's a 2001, I believe, motor, and we are going over size 15. So, pretty cool. Please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. Remember, my Outboard Motor Buying Guide or used Outboard Motor Buying Guide is still available until October 13th for free, $20 value to all of my subscribers. So please like, subscribe, and send me comments. Today, we know now where we're at. So let's measure again. Let's see exactly where we're at. So our piston wall clearance right here is about three and a quarter thousandths. I go down to the bottom, or close to the bottom. I'm about three and a quarter. All the way at the bottom, it should be further, if I did it right, um, four and a half thousandths, right? We double checked last time with our feeler gauge to make sure we're, where we were at was close to what we were measuring, right? We double check with that feeler gauge to double check to measure twice, cut once kind of thing. You know, I'm not a woodworker, but so now we're going to switch our stones out. If you remember, these are the stones we used last. They're still in here. These were the modified stones. So these are the stones that only have a stone at the end. So I could just work that bottom of that cylinder. So I have the bottom of the cylinder about a thousandths and a half bigger, really close to where I need to be for my finish. So that when I hone with my next couple of grits, I'm going to meet that and not end up with a tapered cylinder. So let's check the book again, just to be sure. I'm going to put these aside so I don't mix them up with other stones. So let's take a look at the book. The book says we can be out of round three thousandths. We are right on the money, so we don't have to worry about that. So it says we can have a taper of three thousandths as well. So we don't want, I don't want any taper in it. I want to have it as close as we can. So at the end, we should be almost dead straight, but I have that much leeway. So if you plan to do these things ahead of time, and that's why I was taught by a, a gentleman who's done this many more years than I have, to do the bottom of the cylinder before you finish hone. Because if you try to do it after, you kind of screw up the, the finish hone that you do, and you meet it, if that makes sense. Just to be clear, so what we did was we bored, we bored, we got all of the scratches out of the cylinders, so there's no more imperfections. We also in that process made it more round because it was just about three thousandths out of round. So now we have a nice straight bore, but as we cleaned it out, we end up with a little bit of this. And why is that? Because we can't pass our honing stones all the way through because it's a blind hole cylinder. Like an automotive, you can go all the way through and come back up, go all the way through and come back up, and then your stones and everything stays straight. So this is gonna automatically taper. So we flip the stones upside down to get the bottom a little more. And then we used a set of straight stones to get the, the rest of it to the clearance we needed to be within three thousandths of an inch or within two thousandths of an inch. Then we did the bottom. So we kind of brought, it was a little bit like this. And we kind of brought the bottom out and now we're actually a little bit like that so that when we finish hone the top, it should be dead straight if I did it right. So let's find out. Now we're gonna lubricate this up a little bit. Uh, so I won't need my mask because I'm going to have oil all over the place. I won't have dust flying all over the place. And we'll go to our 200 grit stones. Let's try it. Now we have our 200 grit stones in our machine. I'm going to take my WD-40. Spray up the cylinder really good. Now once again, I'm going to be a really methodical with this. I, I don't want to do this one and then this one and then this one and come back. I, I want to do one and measure and one and measure. And what happens over time is you get a feel for each time you tighten it, you'll know about how much you're taking off. So we don't want to take too much off. We want to make sure our stones have plenty of lube on them now because now we're in the process of finish honing. The first stages of this, remember we have some pretty deep scratches in there from our 100 grit. 
So the first stages is we're really knocking off a lot of that. Could be almost a half a thousandths or a quarter of a thousandths. So I wanna go easy, I wanna move it in and out because I wanna start to do a cross hatch pattern as I do this. It's really the finish hone of the 300 and then the ball hone that gets the cross hatches in it. But we wanna make sure we kind of start that process in the beginning and keep our loop going. I'm just gonna do a little bit more and then measure and we'll see where we're at. You'll get a nice slurry going when you do this and you'll feel it really start to cut and have a nice machine effect to it. So let's see where we're at. So in that first pass, we took out about, just about a half a thousandths between a half and a quarter thousandths. It's not gonna take out as much this time because we've knocked off all the high points from the really deep scratches from the 100. And so we're gonna go a little bit further. I wanna get right to that four and a half to five thousandths range on all of these. I'm still gonna measure down the bottom too, halfway. Should be pretty straight. And then we're going to measure all the way down at the bottom. And that's right where we want to be. So we're going to continue on with this. And then we'll go to 300. And then we'll go to the ball home. So let's keep moving and keep boring and honing. And measuring. After a little bit, I'm going to stop. I do little by little. I don't want to go too far. And now I got to get a 20 over and start all over again, right? So I just go little by little. You'll get a feel for this as you do it more and more. Folks out there who've done it before understand. I'm probably going a little slower than I normally would because I wanna make sure I get as much as we can out there for the people who are looking to do this for themselves. So let's take a closer look. And we can see now our cross hatch pattern starting. All right, cleans up nicely. And let's see what our measurement is here. So at the top here, We are just under four thousandths. Move it down a little bit, just about four thousandths. Go down a little further. Again, we're just about four thousandths. And all the way down in the bottom, which is a little tricky to get to, should be larger than that. And yeah, that is almost five thousandths, like four and three quarters. So this one's coming along nicely. I'm probably gonna, gonna get another quarter of a thousand south out with the 200. I don't wanna go to five with the 200. I wanna leave another quarter of a thousand to do with my 300 grit. Now, once I come through with my honing stones, my uh, ball hone, Christmas tree hone, dingleberry hone, some guys call it, that's not really gonna take off any material at all. That's just really gonna help clean us up. It's also gonna help with our ports. And the ports are what I'm going to show you how I use my Dremel tool and a flap disc to get those ports nice and smooth all the way around so we don't catch a ring on those nice, sharp, newly sharp ports. So we're going to continue on with this and get it to the right measurement we want. Then I'll do the next one and the next one. Then we can come in with our 300. Next, we'll do that. Okay, so we went in with our 200 grit. We made sure we were straight. We made sure we worked back and forth to get a cross hatch going to get that started. And now all of my cylinders, when I measure, as we take a closer look, you can see our cross hatches that are forming. And let's see what our measurements are. So here we are right at four and a half thousandths, four and a quarter thousandths, four and a quarter thousandths. Let's measure this one again. It's not quite four and a half, it's closer to four and, four and a quarter. Now I wanna go down deeper and just double check to make sure. And you can see, a little, little bit more than four thousandths, like four and a quarter. And then here we are a little more than four and a half, 
almost five on these down at the bottom. Same thing on this one. Same thing on this one. So you can see our crosshatch, you can see the difference between the ones with the 100 grit and the ones here that are starting the crosshatch pattern that we like to see. Next step now is to get my 300 grit out and we're gonna go in these cylinders with my 300 grit. We might bring it another quarter of a thousandths out, but we don't wanna go over five. That's kind of where we wanna be between that four and a half, five thousandths. Let's double check with our piston again and see where we're at now. So this is our three thousandths. Let's see where we're at. Goes in nicely. So we know we're more than three thousandths. So let's switch to the four thousandths because if you remember we were just over four thousandths. Let's see how close we are. And there's a nice tight fit. I don't want to push it in any further. I probably could. Nice tight fit when we hit that skirt. So they're all really close. So we've confirmed with our measurements now to be sure we're right where we need to be. We double checked with the feeler gauge. So this is a process. Usually with these outboards, you only have to do one or two cylinders. This one, I wanted to do all of them. One we probably could have got away with, but when there was that many with damage, I just figured what's one or two more pistons to do. So as I said, we're gonna get our 300 stones out. So my stones in these boxes have been used for so many years, the label's gone, so I had to write it on the inside, 200. Uh, now we'll get our 300 stones out and we'll start to do some nice finish honing in here. Then we'll chamfer those cylinders a little, or those uh, ports a little bit. So we're going to show you how to do that in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, send me any comments you have. And don't forget my used outboard motor buying guide. $20 value. It's only free for subscribers for the next couple weeks here, October 13th. That offer ends. I may have some people ask me to extend it. I might extend it for a little while. We'll see how it goes. Appreciate the comments that are coming in. I'm going to do a follow-up video to the what motors to avoid video that I did. I got so much feedback from that that uh, I want to follow up because there's a lot of people out there who have different opinions and experiences. I, I, I like the experiences more than I do just an opinion. I want to know why. So we'll continue on that in our next episode. Please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have, and we'll see you in the next episode. Have a great day.